And so we're in a season, we're in a time, and we're in a pur- we, we are in a purpose as well, because purpose is something, in order for you to fulfill it, you got to first get in it. Purpose is not just something you do. It is not something you fulfill only. It is something that you must get in. You must be in purpose in order to do purpose. All right? You must be in purpose in order to do purpose. So we're grateful to the Lord today for so many. Again, I spoke with uh, Minister Hodges. She was on her way in route. Amen. They got those checkpoints down in Berlin. Amen. He said, Pastor, I'm in the checkpoint line. I'm on my way. I said, said, be careful. Amen. 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 We'll be here when you get here. Close to God. She she be wanting to get to church. Y'all know she's been she's been shed in for a while. But God is doing a work in her. In her body. Amen. Amen. God has done some great things in spite of the diagnosis and the odds and I'm telling you, she, she's already making progress because she's already walking, even with the walk. Amen. The, the doctor was talking about all of those nerves and stuff in the back that would hinder her from movement and everything. But she done got back to driving and Amen. walking and with a walker. That's God. Yes. Sometimes, I'm going to say this, sometimes God will heal you instantaneously. Yes. Sometimes you will get it immediately. Right. And then sometimes you have to go through a process yes. of healing. Yes. You got to go through a process of recovery. Yes. Recovery is a part of your healing. So that, therefore, when you are, when God is taking you through a recovery process, you cannot rush to the end result. Because the process is to protect you from re-entering yourself before the healing day. Alright, I'm going to let you bear me on that because uh, I, I can tell by your response. I told you last week, oh, no, y'all were here last week. The last week crew, uh, uh, Sister Taylor was here. I got her name right. And it's so good to see you, Sister Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems that she brought a lady and a woman called with her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, we, now we don't know you, but we are about to know you. Yeah. Would you like to give us your name? Oh, my name is Haley. Haley? Haley. 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 Haley.
Continue to pray for all of the sick and the shut-in and those who lost loved ones. Continue to pray for uh, my Aunt Betty. She is praying for her. God will strengthen her and restore her. Amen. Amen. And we're praying for all of the Aunt Betty's. I may not know your aunt's name, but we pray for your aunt and your aunt. Yes. Sisters and brothers, grandfathers and grandmothers, moms and dads. We pray for everybody. Amen. Amen. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Now, I want to share something with you as you turn to Psalms 103. I was I got up yesterday morning, and many of you know Saturday is my rest day. I don't really do a whole lot on Saturday. You know, I just relax, may go to the gym or whatever, do my little odds and ends and whatnot, but I don't do a whole lot on Saturday. And I thank God for y'all not bothering me on Saturday. Now we still have some members that still have not learned the the uh, uh, we leave pastor alone on Saturdays and stuff like that. But uh, they mean well. Y'all pray for them. Pray for the anonymous. Pray for the unknown. Amen. <laughs> no, I don't mind it at all. Y'all know I'm just joking. Amen. But uh, no, I better, I better, I better fix that. Yes, I do mind. <laughs> if it's not, if it's not important, don't you bother me? Yes, sir. I, I better fix that. You know, somebody called me this person said, "You said." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I got up yesterday morning and. Sister Haley, don't mind me. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a preacher, but I'm, a, I'm a, I got a sister. In me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, and so, Psalms 103, verse one, it says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name." And as I got up yesterday morning, I woke up weeping. I woke up weeping. This, this happens occasionally. It doesn't always happen, but every now and then I'll wake up. I'll be, it's like I think I'm dreaming. Then I'll wake up and I'm literally crying. Weeping. And within the process, mother, I've been praying. So I wake up crying, thanking the Lord. So I got up, sat on the side of the bed, I said, Lord, what is this? And he says, people are leaving here. I'm calling people home. And people began to, I began to remember just recently, just in the last couple of days, how many people have transitioned from this life to eternity. And I began to weep. And I began to pray. And I said, Lord, help us. Prepare us for your coming. Yes. Yes. And he spoke immediately to me and said, that's man's responsibility. Man has to prepare himself. Women have to prepare themselves for my coming. See, y'all in the shower because we want God to do it all. But we don't have, as if we don't have any responsibility within the relationship. In any relationship you're in, you have responsibility. Whether it's a friendship, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a business partnership, whether it's a fellowship, whether it's a marriage, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship it is, you have a responsibility Everybody has a responsibility in the relationship. Yes. Even as it relates to God. Okay. Yes. So 
he says, man has to prepare himself. Yeah. And so, watch this. When the Lord, so to me, he was correcting me, and I thank him, because I was praying one day, and he showed me. He said, no. He said, man has to prepare themselves. They know I'm coming. Yes. I've already said in the land. Yeah. Yeah. I've sent men and women to proclaim the coming of the Lord. Yeah. So it's not that it's not that people don't know Jesus is coming. How do you to God? Sometimes we get comfortable in staying. Yeah. That we 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 omit to prepare for his coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. He's coming back. I said he's coming back. I know, I know you're making preparation to be here forever, but you're not going to be here forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Count your years as months. Count your months, hallelujah, as weeks. Count your weeks as days. In a day now. He's coming back. He's coming back. This is not a this is not a fairy tale. Amen. This is not this is not a made up story. Jesus is coming again. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. We don't hear a lot of preaching about Jesus coming anymore. We hear preaching that causes us to become comfortable in the earth. And then we're going to stay here. Hallelujah. So the prosperity gospel is was, was causing us to become comfortable here. But you, you haven't seen no magic yet. I don't care. Hallelujah. Yes. Y'all are speaking. I got, I, got to, I got to enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. Huh? I don't care how big they build the biggest house in the land. I don't, I don't care who, who, who is recorded of having the largest, biggest house on the hill. It cannot compare to the mansions of the saints. All right. See, I just know the time the church would be happy on that one day. Hallelujah to God. But, but in this day and time, you need a prophecy, you know? I remember the word was enough. Yes. I remember you could say Jesus and church was over. Yes. Say Jesus now. Oh boy. Yes. What's next? Yes. What's in it for me? Yes. Huh? Yes. Salvation. That's what's in it for me. You can really keep on the burn in hell. That's what's in it for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, um, and uh, so then let me know. So what happened was I began to weep again. And I said, Lord, I thank you for correcting me. And he showed me. He said, This is the posture of those that has a heart after me. So when I correct them, it causes them to weep. But when you don't have a posture and a heart after God, when God corrects you, you will become offended. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correction will make you mad if you don't have a heart to please God. Yes, but when you have a heart to please God, hallelujah, it'll cause you to weep. It'll cause you to lament. It'll cause you to repent if it's necessary. And then he begins to tell me, hallelujah to God. He said, he said, not only does man have the responsibility to prepare, but he also has the responsibility to make repairs. So it is the blessing of God that, that, that causes us not to be taken knowing that we are not ready. And so his mercy is 
is on our side. See, a lot of stuff 
to come out in the meeting and greet. Yes, 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 See, you see, you need to get all that out of the way, so that way you won't feel like you're wasting no money. Y'all don't like my seat. I'm going to go on this side, this side. Y'all was winning. I'm coming back over there. I'm going to give you another chance. Okay? So you know, you need to just be honest. And the fact that you are the leader, uh -oh, that's all the more, you should be honest. Because being dishonest with people is displeasing to the Lord. Yes, 
because I cheat myself from having a relationship with him. Because I do not take the opportunity to get to know him. Because I'm so distracted by what he can do. I don't seize the moment to know who he is. So when when the, when the command becomes uh, when the command comes to me and says, "Bless the Lord." Uh oh. When bless the Lord, my soul automatically responds. See, my soul responds, not my flesh. Notice what it says. Bless. The Bible said the flesh is an enmity of God. It's an enmity against God. Enmity is translated enemy. It is the opposer of God. So anything that has to do with God, the flesh don't want to be included. That's right. Amen. But yet, anything that has to do with the flesh, the flesh expects your soul to be included. <laughs> that's why we that's why we get the soul tied. Why y'all want to talk to me? Now see y'all was with me just a few minutes ago. Do I need to pull out another hymn or do I need to Do I need to ring my bell? Huh? See, it's amazing how we don't hold the flesh accountable right. for getting our soul in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. We say nothing. We have all this rebuked power and never rebuke the flesh. We make excuses for it. We justify this action. But we don't hold it accountable. We don't beat our bodies. Are you, are you scared of your flesh? I can't get no help. Wow. So Paul said we supposed to beat that joke. We don't supposed to, we don't we don't supposed to let the flesh talk back. I can't get no help. We don't supposed to let the flesh show out in public. We we don't supposed to let the flesh bring embarrassment on the household. We don't suppose to misrepresent, we don't suppose to allow the flesh to misrepresent our God on our watch. Hold up, flesh. We need to check this attitude of yours. Because we, if we don't check this attitude, it's going to cause us to be shut out of a whole lot of opportunities that God has already put in our path. And if we don't change our perspective, flesh, we don't keep thinking the wrong thing, being suspicious of people that may have been sent to bless you. Yes, right. You're doing good. See, that goes back to um, you got to get rid of people who is trying to influence you to leave God. Doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a toughie. Because don't allow history to disqualify you from your destiny. Disqualify you from your 
of your destiny. Because, because history has a way of trying to manipulate you into thinking that there is nothing better. History wants you to only envision your life in the future with it. With them. And without them, without it, there is no future. That's what history wants you to believe. History is called history for a reason. And if history was the end, there would be no present and no future. His story. Her story. Saw stuff. You need to write it and close the book. Quit allowing your history to be a part of your present when it should be attached to your testimony. I gave you no help in here. So when you get my testimony, I'm giving you a history report. This is where I've been. This is what I used to do. This is where he delivered me from. This is the person I used to be. But God has made me new. And I'm no longer that person. I'm no longer that person. I'm no longer that person. I no longer do that. I, I'm no longer part of that. So it does Because sometimes association can be misinterpreted as affiliation. You still involved. Oh no, we just friends. You just friends by word. But from perspective, isn't that what y'all used to do? Be seen together? When you was in it, I don't know why I'm preaching this. I really don't. This is not. Last Sunday, crowd will tell you. I, was, I had some of my notes. The Lord let me another way, didn't he? And then he got here go again. Huh? I don't know why I'm preaching this. But I'm just a man, man. Close your blinds, but I'm still going to put it in your mouth. <laughs> and don't sit wrong. Because I done got hit for that too. I went and bought some dog trees. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going, I'm going home. Here it is. Here it is. I'm tired. Y'all woke me out today. Now watch this. Watch this, Lenise. History. Now, I don't know about that. I couldn't stand history. Going to school, I couldn't stand it. Don't nobody want to hear that about the Civil War. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that. Uh, I didn't. I just, I'm saying, look, I was in class. I was drawing. <laughs> I was, you know, throwing paper balls. I mean, I was, I was sweating with the girls. I mean, I was doing everything but listening. Some of y'all did the same thing. Don't look over at me. At least I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth, man. Look, I, I'm still up here. Well, that's a good natural picture, but they were talking about the Civil War. They were talking about all of the stuff. Watch this. They were even talking about my rights. Ooh, you missed that. I, I had tuned out even to the part that I should have been tuned in. Because you can tune out your rights. Ooh, my God. To where it causes you to become stuck in your history. See, I don't like no, I gotta teach this. I gotta teach this. I gotta teach this because you know we we we, we got to minister to the people. 
We got 21 countries too? Well, no, they ain't here yet. Now watch this. Now watch this. Because the devil don't want you to know your rights. So what the devil will do, the devil wants to make us bored in a place that we should be paying attention. Because it was the civil war that led up to my rights. So the part that I didn't want to hear was actually preparing me for what I knew to hear. So the stuff that, that's why I don't regret nothing I've been through. Nothing. I used to, but not no more. I don't regret it, Sister Haley, because now I understand that it was all good for me. Even the stuff I did, I caused. I brought it upon myself. I can't get mad. I made the decision. I chose to do that. I trusted them. I can't put it all on them. I mean, they got to take responsibility for the part they played, but I can't put it all on them. Hello? I don't regret it. The betrayals, I can't blame it all over the trailer. I let them in. I let them in too close. I gave access to people that wasn't worthy. Uh oh. I can't get no help in here. I gave access. See, because when you have a heart and you mean well yourself, you don't expect people to take what you give them for granted. And are y'all listening to me? I've been up here too long. Why don't y'all tell me to stop? Huh? I'm stuck on this history thing because, because um, a lot of people are stuck in history. And you don't know your rights. Don't you know you have a right to be free? <laughs> Guess what? You have a right to bear arms. Yes. You know what that means as a believer? You have a right to clean the blood. Yes. <laughs> they don't hear what I'm saying. You have a right to rebuke the enemy. You have a right to call on that name that's above everything. You got a right to walk in victory, to walk in joy, to walk in peace, to walk in deliverance, to walk in what God. What did you teach me? 
What are you teaching? What are you showing me? What is it that I need to see about myself? Maybe I'm too easy to give trust away. Oh my God. Maybe I keep getting hurt because I keep getting people, giving people the benefit of the doubt that are liars. You can't give a liar the benefit of the doubt. They have a track record of lying. They have to prove themselves by telling the truth. Consistently. <laughs> Forgiveness don't mean be hoodwinked. I'm going, I'm going through it now. Forgiveness don't mean to become hoodwinked over and over. I forgive you, but you ain't going to keep crying to me. I speak deliverance called distance. Uh oh, y'all ain't saying that. I, I said I speak deliverance called distance. I speak deliverance called boundaries. <laughs> See, y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like the boundaries. You don't like no rules. Hallelujah to God. You can't keep living life loosely as a believer now. Something got to, something got to, you got to put a fix up somewhere. You need a security system. You can't complain about these when you are not secure. When everything is open, there's no wall. I can't get no help. There's no wall of protection. You can't complain about who trespasses. If you ain't got no sign up, you can't call the police and complain about somebody trespassing. When you give them access to your place and your place of peace and your place of joy, I wish I had some help in here. When you allow people that cause confusion to have access to your place of peace, you can't complain about trespassing. See, I'm putting responsibility back in your lap now. You want to. Y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all don't want to hear that. They hurt my feelings. Who let them in? You already know they hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. We know that. We already know hurt people, hurt people. Are they healed? What's the testimony? Have they testified they've been healed yet? Are they in the process of being healed? Are they talking about they going through the deliverance? So, so why are you letting them back in? Wow. Thank you, Lord. Well, 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 I feel that my in my spirit that they change. What, you trust in feelings? You trust in feelings over the whole house? <laughs> See y'all, we're saying that. Uh oh, you trust in feelings over fruit? <laughs> I can't get no help. I don't know why y'all won't help me. I don't know, don't worry about it. Where's Destiny here? Where's the girl there? Where's the girl there? Let Destiny come back here and help pass the priest. You believe in feeling over fruit? Jesus said the tree is known by the fruit, not by the feelings. It's known by the fruit that it has. Ye shall know them by how they make you feel. No, that ain't what it is. And you shall know them by their fruit. The fruit. And the fruit is a reflection of the root. So what you see in the fruit came from the root. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Y'all heard me say it before. Stop being distracted by the beauty of the leaves and pay more attention to the fruit on the branch. But, 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 see, but. That but is what's causing you not to see fruit. See, you, you ain't ready to accept the truth about what you justify. Anytime there's a but after you have been told the truth about the situation. You have not accepted the truth. You are still in denial of what the truth has revealed. You know what it is? That's willing deception. <laughs> and now, now, if you keep being willingly deceived, 
it's no longer deception. You in agreement. You're no longer deceived. You don't, you're no longer being deceived. You are now in agreement with what's binding you. You're in covenant now. And you don't want to accept the truth about it. I don't know why I'm preaching this. Somebody, somebody must be attached to something really serious for God to send this word like this. Your soul is in danger of this connection. Your mind, your well-being, your health. Some people, some people are sick because of who they're connected to. That's why every time you go to the doctor, they can't find it. Because, of, because the cause is in the connection. I can't get no help. I can't get no help anymore. See, 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 the connection ain't gonna show up on the X-ray. The wrong connection ain't gonna show up on the MRI. You can't see it in the blood work. Because it's a spiritual connection. It's a spiritual, it, it, it's a spiritual connection that causing you to suffer. It will affect your finances, it will affect your health. It will affect everything. It will affect your relationship, your walk, your discipline, your, 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 your sanctification. I do, I do good for a while. That ain't good enough. God wants you to deliver. So you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't allow people to settle for what's not theirs. Lord have mercy. God wants you to be free. We can't let you settle for relief. We can't let you settle for feeling good for a couple of days when your life should consist of peace. Vacations are not supposed to be for you to go on so that you can get a few days of peace to come back to a lifetime of chaos. Vacation is really not vacationing because all you're doing is you're trying to escape the chaos of your life. And because, there, because you are the common denominator both to the place of vacation and the place of chaos, you can't seem to get away from the chaos even when you need the place of chaos. Because you are still connected because it is in your mind, it's attached to your emotions, it's attached to your family, it's attached to your finances. So even when you're on vacation spending money, you're thinking about the chaos back at home. You don't get to enjoy vacation because you're so worried about going back to chaos. And you say stuff like, this one long enough. I wish I could have had a couple more days. Yeah. You know why you're saying that? Because you haven't been on vacation. You just took a break from chaos. And that's why y'all ain't saying nothing. See, that's why when people come back from vacation, they need to get an extra day or two to recover from the vacation. How is that making any sense? Why do you have to recover from a vacation when it was a vacation that caused you to go to a place away from everything that was pulling from you and draining you? Vacation was supposed to be the recovery. How do you, what? You got to come off of vacation and you need an extra couple of days to recover? When vacation was supposed to be the time of recovery. Let the church say amen. Y'all want me to give you an amen? I did the majority of the part. Pastor, go ahead and close the message. They ain't failing you. You know what I'm saying? Just go back and listen to the replay. Go get you some chicken wings and go home and do 
just you enjoy the service. You know what I'm saying? You shout down at the table. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I was just thought I'd at least get an amen from this side, because I gave y'all another chance. That them over there, they, they don't know what they don't know what they're gonna do. But are y'all hearing me? Yes, I'm really concerned about you. And me too. Amen. Concern is preaching this morning. Did you know who you are? Did you know, did you know your worth? Did you know your value? Did you know who you are? And if you don't know, it's okay. You can ask God. And quit looking for people to tell you. Amen. <laughs> you know, but, but you know what? I ought to help you to know what the value is. Only you know what you deliver. That's right. That's right. Your value comes out of what you've been through. Yeah. Right. Uh oh, not what you take yourself through. Right. You can't count that. Right. Ah, ah, y'all say that. You can't count. Uh -uh, that is not in the appraisal. Disobedience is not included in the appraisal. You get on my nerves. Okay. I'm still going to tell you the truth. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Huh? Disobedience, rebellion, you can't include that into the into the appraisal. Take that out. That's right. <laughs> now what's your word? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I see they don't like that. Yeah. And it should be good. Because if you remove the disobedience and the rebellion, actually your value should go up. Yeah, yeah. When I said this will be rebellion, the showers that were showering before I said that, they had a shower. When I said this will be rebellion, no shower. Now they nod your head. Yeah. Right. Don't nod your head. You should still have a shower. That's, right. that's the problem. Your value is in your emotionalism. Right. And that's why you got to have the proper CEO. You got to have something good. For you to feel validated because you don't know your work. You don't need no validation. You don't need no affirmation. Once you come into Christ Jesus, you ought to know who you are. If you're a man, you're a man. If you're a woman, you're a woman. You don't need no affirmation. You know what goes in his nature? Men don't lie with men. Women don't lie. I said it. Yes, I did. Men don't lie with women. Men and women don't lie with children. Men and women don't lie with children. Men and women don't lie with children. It's an abomination. And being single and a man don't make you gay. And being single and a woman don't make you homosexual. But you gotta carry yourself the way you want to be viewed. See, one thing about me, I'm not gonna shy away from the truth. If I gotta go to jail, so be it. But I will not conform to the laws that man is true in the past because they choose to be rebellious against the God I say I love. We got an altar for you. I can sing. I don't care how much you can sing. Get to the altar first. I'm getting it. And if you're bound, get free. So you can be gifted and affected. You know how many churches would love to have me? Well, why you ain't gone? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I was literally had people to tell me that. Y'all, I can tell y'all some stories that have happened to me in 20 years. You don't know who I am. I don't care. All I care about is your soul. Your gifts don't move me. And I see you, you're broken. I'm trying to minister to your brokenness. God told me to help you to get delivered. You trying to show me what you can do. God wants you to show him how you live. Saints. Saints. I care about your souls. I don't care about all the other stuff. Because that stuff work. That stuff work over there. I care about your soul. I want you to be right with God. I want you to make it to the city. Call heaven. I want you to get a well done. I don't want you to do ministry and get a depart from me. And then I, I'm like Paul. Oh, I don't want to preach to so many others that I myself be a castaway. I preach to everybody else and y'all get to live and free and all that and then I die and go to hell. Tell your neighbor, he don't want that for you. He don't want that for you. He wants you to be better. I want y'all to be better. I want y'all, I want y'all to reach your full potential. It's more easier to reach your potential to deliver than trying to reach it back. Because you'll be so distracted and busy dealing with what's got you bound that you never tap into the potential. And God gave you why you were free. See, it's, it's, it's just, it's, you know what, Mother, it's just easier to serve the Lord free than to serve the Lord struggling. Okay? It's just easier. It's easier to love the Lord without any hatred, without any bitterness, and unforgiveness. All that stuff right there. You can't love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your spirit. Because there's some other stuff cluttered in your heart. But when you when you walk in forgiveness, it's easy to love. Did y'all hear what I said? When you walk in forgiveness, it's easy to love. Y'all hear what I said? I'm saying it again. When, when you walk in forgiveness, it's more easier to love. It's hard to love people you resent. It's hard to love people that you, you uh oh, uh oh, that, that, that you don't like. We need to work on that. Huh? This is the this is the season. This is the hour. No wasting time. I have no time to waste. I got a purpose to fulfill. I got things to do. I got a God to glorify. I got a destiny to reach. I got a purpose to fulfill. I'm going to say it again. I got a destiny to reach. I got work to do. I got people that God has sent me to minister to. I don't have time to waste. I'm, I'm even willing to let you have it. So I can keep my peace. Win the argument. So that I can keep my peace. <laughs> you can have it. I'm done with it. I gotta go. <laughs> See, when you when you got something to do. You don't have time to entertain nothing. That makes sense. You got something? I gotta go. See, when you ain't got nothing to do, you can stand around and make something out of nothing. But ain't nobody got time to fool with you when they got something to do. They hang it up. <laughs> huh? They grab their stuff and they hit they, they hit it from the door. They are closing that chapter in their life. So 
Somebody need to close the chapter. Matter of fact, don't close the chapter, close the whole book. Because that book is no good for you to read. Lord have mercy. Sometimes you can close a chapter and think that the next chapter will be better. No, because all the chapters make up the book. And sometimes it is the information that you're getting out of the book, not so much the chapters. Because the chapters consist of the information of the title of the book. So sometimes you got to close the whole book and get rid of the book. Don't even worry about reading the rest of the chapters. Close the book. The title gave it away. Close the book. Don't give it away. Throw it away. <laughs> Some stuff you don't need to give away. You need to throw it away. Because you don't want nobody to inherit what was unhealthy for you. Sometimes you can inherit unhealthiness. Because somebody gave it to you when they should have thrown it away. Am I making sense? I got a question for y'all. Ready? <laughs> Did y'all get a word today?
Thank you for mercy. Thank you for more time. Thank you for extending our days that we may make ourselves ready for the coming of Christ. We love you, Lord. Lord, I've done what you told me to do. And I said what you told me to say. Give the glory out of God. Restore the virtue back in me, I pray. We thank you, Lord. We count it up. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, we never want to deny anybody if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to come forth in this time. I want you to give your life to Christ. Amen. Somebody that's straight away from the Lord, you have. Feel you feel a distance. You're not close to him like you were. We want to pray for you. That God will restore the relationship. Hallelujah. Everybody good? Everybody saved? That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. Come on, give God praise for your salvation. Yes. It is more blessed to give than it is to work. 
Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall he cause men to do what? To the bosom. And the liberal soul shall be made fast. Amen. And we believe in tithing and offerings and giving to the those that are in need. Amen. And thank God for zeal and cash. Amen. So those that are watching, those that are present, you can go to our uh, cash out. This dollar sign, DTWC Greensboro. Um, those that are needing envelopes, they want to serve you. Amen. With an envelope. And uh, we are excited about what God is doing. We're coming up on our 20th year. Yeah. Our 20th. Yeah. 19th. Amen. 20 years of serving God has really been good to Amen. the Living Temple Worship yeah. Center. And for Him, we give the glory. Amen. 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 We are here because of him. We're here. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. That's right. Amen. Amen. So many lives have been changed. So many souls have been saved. We've seen miracles, signs of wonders. People have been healed uh, from all manner of sickness and disease. Amen. We can go down the list. Um, when we were over on Lee Street, we had canes and walkers yes. on the wall. Yes. Matter of fact, we, we had them here. They back there. I think somewhere back there. Folks came in with canes and walking and wheelchairs and God just healed people. And, and um, I never forget the story of Murph. Came in paralyzed. Yes. God healed her body. Amen. They brought her in and she walked out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so blinded eyes. One woman came to church with deaf in one ear. God healed her of hearing. A man was blind. The paramedics came out, checked them out, said, you can see. And they showed us the record that he was legally blind. God healed him in the doorway of the church. He didn't even come all the way in. He was in the doorway. And God healed him. So he, he's yet he's yet a healer. And we, we are expecting God to move and do some great and mighty things in this new year, the 20th year. So we pray and hope that everyone can attend uh, our 20 year anniversary banquet. Yeah. So you can see uh, Sister Dana, or uh, Minister Danette today, get, get you a ticket. Or, matter of fact, I have a list of people that I need to give to, to them today. Um, people have been calling me wanting tickets. And my understanding is Faces are filling up. Amen. And we are spending a powerful, powerful time. Amen. So thank God again for each and every one of you. Thank God for your support, your attendance, Amen. your prayers. We'll be back, Lord willing, on Wednesday night for Bible study. We, we've been in that great series of teaching the role of a leader Amen. and the responsibility of the church. Many of you, I see you tomorrow night on Back to the Bible. We, we started a new series, the Issues in the Music Ministry. We're dealing with all of that. We're ministering to the musicians, singers, choir, all of that. So it's a great segment. Please come in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Back to the Bible on my page. And we'll see you. Of course, Wednesday night, the Bible study. Every, every Friday, the church is open, 12 noon. For prayer. So, first and third is really our official prayer day. The church is open every Friday at 12 noon. So, if you want to come by and pray, please come through, pray, cry to God, lay out on the altar, do what you do. And of course, on Sunday, Sunday mornings at 9 30, Sunday school, and 11 o'clock worship at 11 a.m. Yeah. That's all the now. All right. I did good, I did. Amen. <laughs> We got any birthdays in this month? July is gone, but it's gone out this week. That's all the birthdays. All right, so we're prepared. We got the August babies. We got one, two, two August babies. 
Praise God for the birth of the sanctuary. Yeah. Praise 